Thanks for joining me for episode one of this new series covering the North American Defense Coalition, or more commonly known as the NADC. The NADC is a multilateral coalition of the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. In this episode, I'll cover the mission of the NADC, its background, its capabilities, and finally, the structure of the NADC. This will provide adequate context for the upcoming series. I plan to release intelligence summaries, or insums, every Friday. The mission of the North American Defense Coalition is to protect and defend North America, its territories and interests in order to promote regional security and deter aggression. The end state of the NADC is to ensure the protection of the greater populace from all external threats. Its guiding principles are that through partnership and combined effort, the NADC enables for the adequate defense of the homeland through peaceful collaboration. The NADC advocates for diplomacy first and deters aggression by enabling an enhanced protective posture. So now for a little historical background of the NADC. The United States, Mexico, and Canada have a solid history of partnering and collaboration, most notably through the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA, which came into effect on January 1, 1994. NAFTA reduced barriers to trade and investment between the U.S., Canada, and Mexico, and while controversial at times, did strengthen bonds between the nations by enabling streamlined planning, negotiations, and general communication. NAFTA met with much criticism over the years and was ratified several times during its 26-year history. In 2019, a revised agreement was drafted and agreed upon in a new trilateral agreement known as the U.S.-Mexico-Canada Agreement in 2020, or USMCA. Despite NAFTA's criticisms, it did produce many favorable results. One infrastructure element known as the Canamax Corridor vastly improved transportation corridors between Canada and Mexico through the U.S. The corridor funding also enabled for railroad improvements and upgrades, as well as lengthening to fiber optic telecommunications infrastructure. After USMCA was initiated in 2020 and met with success, Global tensions rose significantly, and the three nations decided to expand cooperation through the implementation of a security agreement. The security agreement was decided upon amid a global pandemic, escalating cartel activity, a resurgence of radical ideological activity, and active rogue states operating covertly in Mexico. The initial security agreement was ratified several times, with each ratification bringing a more organized and structured cooperative. The final agreement resulted in a well-defined command structure, the establishment of NADC-specific installations, and appropriate funding streams for defense and civil authority unified actions. This would be Charter NA-931-028, which replaced the previous two draft security agreements and was fully enacted on June 21, 2024. This charter established the NADC as the second largest unified defense force in the world second only to NATO. And now for a look at some of the enabling capabilities that the NADC Charter activates. As mentioned in the Guiding Principles, diplomacy is a fundamental mechanism of the NADC. This is why 12 regional diplomat teams have been assembled along with 30,000 nation-hosted civil authority partners. The flexible deterrence options include 2.3 million active duty personnel, 2,370 aircraft and nearly 200 surface vessels. Finally, a robust cyber defense network and infrastructure operating out of at least 50 data centers. And finally, we'll examine the general command structure of the NADC for deterrence only. The civilian hierarchical structures will be provided in later episodes. As you can see, the command position is a four-star billet provided to the Canadians with DCOMs or deputy commanders provided to the U.S. and Mexico. They are both three-star billets, while a chief of staff oversees all of the unified operations with four primary teams for the domains, um, as seen. Administratively, down below, the commands are managed by civilian secretaries. For instance, the U.S. service components are managed by a senior SES, and the other nations are similarly managed. Also noteworthy is the U.S. Secretary of State billet, which indirectly falls under the commander, and U.S. civil authorities uh, that fall under one U.S. secretary for operational control. They don't want the DHS out there operating rogue, uh, so the intent is that there is one unified authority. 
And lastly, this represents one of the foundational organizational units, a ground-based infantry company with page one of a TONE. TONE is Table of Organization and Equipment. This is a US-based unit example that both Canada and Mexico would mirror as capable after TOAD to the NADC. TOAD means transfer of authority from national authority to NADC, NADC controlled. The NADC employs uniquely multifunctional company formations that are largely self-sustaining and comprised of Army, Navy, Air Force, and Special Forces operators that are operationally detached but available as mission requirements dictate. The companies are infantry-centric, light infantry, highly specialized support functionality. It was thought that simplicity in design was important as authorities and structures get convoluted quickly, as evidenced with other multilateral organizations. Each company is capped at 100 personnel and has embedded civilian and contract support. This concludes Episode 1, the NADC Mission, Background, and Capabilities. In the next episode, the NADC will face its first real threat in northern Mexico with an incursion into Baja California through the port of Cabo San Lucas. The arrival of heavily armed entrants into Baja California activates NADC units assigned in the Pacific Southwest area of operations. Episode 2 will include an intelligence summary along with an NADC concept of operations for interdiction. Many of the follow-on episodes will be based in the Sonoran Desert, with some maritime interdiction taking place in the Gulf of California, and later the Gulf of Mexico. Anyways, thanks for joining me today. Please reach out with questions or recommendations for future episodes. Interactivity may be a fun way to approach this fictional series. See you next time.